September 18, 2014, from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, Georgia. It was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Atlanta Falcons on Thursday Night Football. And what a game this was. This NFL history was made, but we'll get to that in a moment. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers won the toss, and they elected to defer, so the Falcons had the ball first. In six plays is all it took for Matt Ryan to get the Falcons in the end zone as he found Harry Douglas for a three-yard touchdown pass that made it 7 to nothing Atlanta. So now the Bucks had the ball with about 12 minutes left in the first. They took over on their own 33, but they would go three and out and put the ball back to the Falcons. So now the Falcons took over with about 10 minutes left in the first. They were driving down the field. Tatoilolo ended up fumbling, but Devin Hester would recover. So the Falcons ended up keeping the ball. And then moments later, Matt Ryan threw a second touchdown pass of the game, this time to Julio Jones for an eight-yard touchdown that made it 14 to nothing. So the Bucks now took over with three minutes left in the first. And three plays into the possession, Josh McCown, who was first interception and only interception of the game, to Kamal Ishmael. And he ran it back for the pick six. 23 yards to make it 21 to nothing. So the Falcons now opened up the first quarter with 21 unanswered points. The Bucks then took over with about two and a half minutes left in the quarter. And then McCown gave the ball to Bobby Rainey on a pass. He got 13 yards and then he fumbled. Lowry recovered and now the Falcons had the ball with about two minutes left in the quarter. They brought the quarter to an end and on the first play of the fourth quarter, Devin Hester scored on an end around as he ran 20 yards into the end zone to make it 28 to 0. So the Falcons now were up by four touchdowns at the beginning of the second quarter. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers took over on their own 22, but they would end up punting. So they went three and out. They actually ran four plays, but one was an offensive holding penalty. So the Falcons took over with less than 13 minutes left before halftime. They would end up fumbling the ball as Smith fumbled it, and the Bucks took over. It's this game was filled with turnovers on both sides from both teams. So the Bucks had the ball with less than nine minutes left before halftime, but then history happened as they went three and out, and they would punt the ball. And history was Devin Hester as he ran 62 yards and high stepped into the end zone put his left hand behind his head in tribute to primetime Neon Deion Sanders as he broke his record as they were tied at 19. And now Devin Hester has 20 special teams touchdowns as he is the number one returner in the history of the NFL. So history happened, and it was now 35 to nothing as the Falcons were laying it on hard and heavy. The Bucks now took over with about seven minutes left before halftime, and they would end up punting once again. So now the Falcons had the ball with a little less than five minutes left before halftime, and they would end up punting for the first time in this game. So every drive before had resulted in a score except for the fumble, and now they punted. Now the Bucks got the ball with about three minutes left, and they punted again. So the Falcons took over with about a minute and a half left before halftime, they had the ball on their own 14, and they drove all the way into Tampa Bay territory as they had the ball on the Tampa Bay 41. And instead of waiting for fourth down, they called a timeout, and they went for a 59-yard field goal, but it was no good. It was wide left. And moments later, the game went to halftime with the score remaining 35 to nothing. Tampa Bay would start the second half with the ball and down by five touchdowns. But then Bobby Rainey fumbled for the second time. And now the Falcons took over with 13 minutes left in the third quarter. But they would end up fumbling. And the Bucks took back over now with 12 minutes left. They would go three and out. And the Falcons took over now with 11 minutes left in the third. And Matt Ryan made short work of the Bucks defense. It only took him five plays to go 82 yards, capped off by a 40-yard touchdown to Julio Jones, and that made it 42 to nothing Falcons. The Bucks then took back over with about eight and a half minutes left in the quarter, but then a muffed snap ended up in another fumble. 
and the Falcons took over once again. Now with about eight minutes left, just a little over eight minutes left, and Steven Jackson ran it in for a two-yard touchdown as it was first and goal from the two, and it was now 49 to nothing. So the Falcons were up by 49 points, having scored seven unanswered touchdowns. Now the Bucks had the ball, still with eight minutes left in the third, as time had seemed to have frozen. They would end up punting, and now the Falcons got the ball back with about five minutes left in the third quarter, and that's when Anton Smith would score on a 38-yard touchdown to make it 56 to nothing, five plays and 80 yards later. So now the Falcons have scored 56 unanswered points. They scored eight touchdowns, and the Bucks had failed to get on the scoreboard. The Bucks would end up bringing the third quarter to the close and opened up the fourth, driving all the way down to the three-yard line of Atlanta, where Mike Glennon found Vincent Jackson for their first touchdown of the game for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, as they now had seven points on the board with the score 56 to 7. The Falcons then took over with a little less than nine minutes on the clock, and TJ Yates had actually come in in relief of Matt Ryan with the outrageous score on the scoreboard as they were just killing him. And Yates ended up throwing an interception as Lansana intercepted him and ran it 27 yards to the end zone for the pick six to double the Tampa Bay Buccaneers score at 14 points as they now trail by 42 points at 56 to 14. So now the Falcons took over with about seven minutes left in the game. They would end up punting the ball after reaching midfield and the Bucks would take over with less than two minutes left and they needed six touchdowns. They wouldn't even score again and this game would come to a close with the final score 56 to 14 as Atlanta Falcons win in a blowout over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And in this game, Matt Ryan was 21 for 24 with 286 passing yards and three touchdowns. Mike Lennon was 17 for 24 with 121 passing yards and one touchdown. The leading rusher was Steven Jackson. He had 54 yards off 14 carries. He also had a touchdown as well. Bobby Rainey had 41 yards off 11 carries. He also had 64 yards off of seven receptions. Julio Jones was the game's leading receiver with nine receptions for 161 yards as well as two touchdowns. But this game was all about the fumbles and the turnovers as the Bucks fumbled the ball five times and the Falcons fumbled it four times for nine total fumbles. They ended up losing four lost fumbles for the Bucks, three lost fumbles for the Falcons for a total of seven lost fumbles since each team threw an interception. So it was a total of nine turnovers, five turnovers for the Bucks, four turnovers for the Falcons. Of course, you wouldn't know that the Falcons turned it over four times. You would have said they were going to turn it over four times and win the game, 56-14. to 14. No one will believe that. Of course, the five turnovers for the Bucks is what hurt them. And the Falcons capitalized, whereas they were able to minimize the damage that was done by their turnovers. And they win this game 56-14. to 14.